Jared Poland from Nosephoto.com, and this is your... I feel like an idiot. Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Sarmonic and their brand new Blink 500 B2 Plus, an affordable, and I do mean affordable, all-in-one wireless mic system. The B2 Plus offers you four-in-one connectivity with USB-C, Lightning, three and a half millimeter TRS, and three and a half millimeter TRRS connections. That means you can connect them to a camera, a phone, a computer, and much more. You get two transmitters, allowing you to record two subjects right out of the box, or stream to two different platforms at the same time. Battery life is solid at 20 hours, and with the charging case, you get an additional 20 hours of juice. You can also charge while while it's in use. There's multiple noise canceling options, 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity, giving you up to 492 feet of working distance. It's compact, light, and also has a metal back clip with magnetic mounts, as well as a small OLED display. Remember when I said affordable? Yeah. The B2 Plus is $129, and if you use the code FRO10 at bit.ly slash B2FRO, you're gonna save 10% more. First up, do you own a Leica? No. Me neither. Leica recently announced that they were able to increase sales revenues in 2022 and 2023 financial year once again and achieve new record-breaking results. Sales revenues rose to 485 million euros in comparison with the previous year's figures of 444 million euros and with a significant increase of 9% achieved a new record high. This is the third year in a row where Leica has posted record revenue. Must have been a slow news day. One of the reasons Leica continues to to do well is they produce extremely high quality, limited quantity products. And like many luxury items, the people who own them will tell you that they are the greatest thing since sliced bread. And the people who don't own them, well, they'll just complain about how overpriced they are and that only doctors, lawyers, and Porsche drivers can afford them. But don't fret, if you can't afford a Leica, I've got a review of the new poor person's Leica, the Fuji X106, coming in hot. In fact, the Fuji took this photo of all these Leicas that are sitting on the table. I Leica. I personally think it's great that Leica continues to grow and do well. They're also branching off into the world of cell phone cameras, which in my opinion, cheapens the brand. Just look at Zeiss. I see Zeiss on a cell phone and I know it's really not a real Zeiss, but I guess it could be good marketing for future doctors and lawyers, as well as Porsche owners who want the, the best of the best of the best. Next up, Canon Rumors is claiming there are at least three more RF power zoom lenses coming. Now, as you may recall, the first power zoom lens was a 24 to 105 2.8, which I took on Safari to great success. But even though it has the capability to be a powered zoom, Canon has yet to release the actual power zoom adapter. So basically, you don't have the power, unlike this guy. <laughs> Regardless of that fact, that doesn't seem to have stopped Canon from forging ahead with a few more potential power zoom lenses. According to the rumors, one of the lenses would be a second generation 70 to 200 2.8, which is rumored to be released in the next four to six months. And the latest rumor is for a 15 to 60 2.8 power zoom. Holy overlap, Batman. Why can't I just have a 12 to 200 2.8 and call it a day? No, make it a 12 to 300 while you're at it. Not possible. But forget about the power zoom in this rumored lens, and let's talk about the 15 to 60 2.8. Can you say goodbye to the 24 to 70 and the 15 to 35 2.8? Because I can. Why would I want a 24 to 70 or a 15 to 35 when I can have a 15 to 60? And don't yell at your screen and say, wait. Wait, what? You know, like W-E-I-G-H-T, not W-A-I-T, because I'll personally take more weight in exchange for versatility. Now, I personally would love for this lens to be a 14 to 50 or 60 because wider is better. But wow, 15 to 60 would be an insane lens regardless of having the ability to power zoom or not. Now, if this is true, my guess that this lens would set you back roughly $2,500 or more. Now, if Canon keeps going at this pace, there's gonna be a ton of overlap in their system and I don't think they care. Oh, I, I like money. And finally, are we about to see Canon fully open up their RF mount and welcome Sigma glass into the fold? Welcome. According to an interview on the website, my Navi, not to be mistaken with those blue people from that, that movie. Navi. 
Canon's Imaging Division Chief Executive, Mr. Takora, had this to say. Canon is communicating with third-party manufacturers regarding RF mount lenses, and there are no restrictions. He went on to deny any rumors or reports that said Canon put restrictions on third parties. Do you know what would put an end to these rumors? I don't know. Saying that we will be having third-party lens options coming from X, Y, and Z shortly, and look forward to working together to make great glass. Now, I personally think it's a matter of when and not if we get third-party RF lenses. When will then be now? Now, it would be nice to see some Sigma glass come sooner rather than later. And, and speaking of sooner, Sigma CEO hinted that full-frame lenses would be making their way to Nikon's Z-mount, which seems to make sense as there's already Tamron glass. On top of all of this third-party full-frame glass talk, Sigma CEO also expressed a personal interest in bringing medium format lenses to market. The moral of the story, Sigma continues to crush it with all the lenses they are making. And there you have it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.